We present Kenneth Williams, Clement Freud, Barry Took and Peter Cook in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello and uh, welcome to Just a Minute. And alas, this is going to be the last one in the present series. And... Ah... But we are delighted to welcome back that new radio comedy duo of Cook and Took. Peter Cook, who did so well when he was with us a few weeks ago, and Barry Took, together they've returned to do battle against our two regulars, Kenneth Williams and Clement Freud. They're going to try and speak, if they can, for just a minute on a subject I will give them and do it without hesitation, repetition, or deviating from the subject. And the first one is the Loch Ness Monster. And Clement Freud, we've decided you should start with that, and you have 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. The Loch Ness Monster is probably the most important aspect of Scottish tourism after haggis and the kilt, two things which I often mix up or am unable to tell apart. In Loch Ness, which is a huge inland watering hole in the southern part of Scotland... Um, uh, Peter Cook has challenged... Uh, whose hold is it, does this lock water? I don't know, I don't know if it waters holes at all, this, um... He said it's a water hole. He said it, he said it was a watering hole. That's right. Oh, no, Where that's... is it watering? <laughs> <laughs> In which hole is it watering? I've heard of it watering, this lock, it's been there for years, yeah. the lock. A watering hole sounds like a spa, doesn't it? You'd hardly call Loch Ness a spa. You don't get a monster in a spa unless Clement's down there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I agree with your challenge, Peter, and you have 42 seconds on the subject of the Loch Ness Monster starting now. Far more important to the Scottish tourist industry than the Loch Ness Monster is, of course, the wife of the Loch Ness Monster, <laughs> the strange flying lizard-like creature that hovers over Dundee of an evening, often seen by Scotsmen in their kilts, sucking down the wonderful liqueurs that come from the foggy moors that abound in that part of the world. They take their drink and say, Och, no, you see up there, flying high above us, tis the wife of the Loch Ness Monster, the wingly diggly diggly doodle bear, because they're all mad up in Scotland, yeah. than I imagine. Yes, that was beautiful, but I'm afraid you were challenged before you, in full flight and flood by Clement Freud, I'm afraid. Repetition of wife. You rotten player. <laughs> Three seconds to go, and our guest was in full flood, and in fact he was in an alcoholic mist up in Scotland somewhere. <laughs> but it was a correct challenge, so I have to give it to you, Clement, and you had three seconds on the Loch Ness Monster starting now. Miniature submarines have gone into the loch looking... <laughs> Well, Ian Messeter, who blows our whistle after 60 seconds, tells us whoever speaking at that moment gets an extra point. It was, of course, Clement Freud. He's in the lead at the end of the first round. Kenneth Williams, will you take the next round? The subject is taking command. I'm sure it's something you can do admirably. Will you tell us something about it in just a minute, starting now? There are certain figures in history who are obviously adept at taking command. One thinks immediately of someone like Alexander the Great, Wellington, and Bernadotte who, as one of the most successful commanders in Napoleon's army, was then asked by the Swedes, would you come and be our king? And he said, I will, I'll come. And he did take command, not only of their country... Uh, Peter Cook, a challenge. Two comes, come, come. Yes, he said, will you come? And he well, listen, Peter, and tw 39 seconds on taking command, starting now. The entire art of taking command, whether be it women or men, is to have in one's demeanor that strange gleam of authority which is respected by other people. When I am asked to take command, I do not do it lightly, for the responsibilities of being in command are enormous. Uh, <laughs> Barry Duke has challenged. Well, repetition of command. Which well, that's, on. Well, that's, that's on the card, and you can. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'll, could, I, could I sit somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> no, nice no, to no, hear from you, Barry. Yes. <laughs> right. 
I mean, he's no. so dominating when you're close to him. I know. I mean, the, the visual uh, example of taking command, which uh, Peter Cook gave us there while he was uh, talking about the subject, was quite incredible. And uh, I, I'm afraid I disagree with the challenge, Barry. So Peter Cook gets a point for that, and he continues on taking command with 13 seconds left starting now. Yes, another few moments of that, and I'd have been bombing Dresden. <laughs> such, is, <laughs> such is the power of command when it gets into my... My hands when it is in the... <laughs> yes, such is the power of command in Peter Cook's hands that he can keep going on the subject until the whistle and gain that extra point and he's taken a commanding lead at the end of the round. Uh, Peter Cook, will you begin the next round? The subject, other well-known cooks. Lots of well-known cooks from all over the world. There's Thomas Cook who started off that wonderful travel firm on which I go. But possibly better known than him is Alistair Cook with his letters from America. He used to be in France before America, but he didn't bother to send the letters. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Freud challenged. The repetition of America. Yes. Of what? I didn't hear, sorry. Repetition. Yes. Of. Of, of? America. America, yes, I didn't hear you say the word America. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, sorry, I thought I didn't, you didn't hear of. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> there are 40 seconds on other well-known cooks starting now. I could talk for some time on other well-known cooks like Escoffier, but frankly, Peter Cook seems to me to be the the essence of that name, by far the greatest exponent of cookery in this part of London, not to say in America, France, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, Holland, Norway. Uh, Kenneth Williams has challenged. Deviation, he said not to say and then said them all. <laughs> Well done, Kenny. So you have a point and the subject, and there uh, are 18 seconds. Other well-known cooks starting now. One thinks, of course, of Mrs. Beaton. She was always at it, doing the old egg whites and bashing away at the batter. Never stopped, and what an industrious woman she turned out to be, and gave her name to one of the most famous books on the subject. Not only... Uh, Peter Cook has challenged. Repetition of the word book. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yes, it's not true, true yeah. but I had to think of something. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Peter. Three seconds on other well-known cooks starting now. The cooks. And uh, Clement Freud challenge. Hesitation. Yes, but he's a guest and you're rotten to do that. <laughs> so we're going to leave it with you, Peter. Two seconds, other well-known cooks starting now. They do not spoil the broth. Much is... <laughs> So Peter Cook did have the subject once again as the whistle went and got that extra point, has increased his lead, and Clement Freud's in second place. Barry Took, will you take the next round, the subject, Spanish dancing? Will you tell us something about that in just a minute, starting now? <laughs> and Kenneth Williams a challenge. There's hesitation, I'm afraid. Yes, well, I, uh, as he's also a guest, and I didn't give it when Clement well, Freud... Well, you're rewriting the rules of the game, or something. <laughs> Who do you think you are? You're no. supposed to be the chairman. Yes. Not I... the divisor. No, I'm not devising and I'm not rewriting. I'm interpreting the rules. Oh. And I've decided <laughs> that he hadn't got underway. He's also a guest. I'm not going to count it. And he has a point for a wrong challenge. And he continues with 58 and one half seconds on Spanish dancing. Well, he hasn't started yet, but he'll start, I hope, <laughs> soon, sometime, on Spanish dancing starting now. Tap, 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 tap. Kevin Freud has challenged you. What on earth for? Too many taps. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I was just getting into my flow. I know, but it was a very repetitious flow. Well, you only said one can, word. How can you describe Spanish dancing without going? Tap, 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 tap. Well, you can say a lot of taps, a frequency of taps, um, continuous tapping. Right. Yes. I'll do that then. The next one. <laughs> Clement, you have the subject of Spanish I don't dancing. Have the chance? Is that I'm awfully sorry. Do I, don't I have the chance? No, no, no. I've given you one chance. I can't give you too many, otherwise I would get too many letters. Yes, and, uh, I, do. I, do I have to answer that. some of them too. I do see um, that. There are 56 seconds on the Spanish dancing, Clement, starting now. 